Hey everybody, this is Odd Job Entertainment bringing you another video today. And, uh, you know, people are really getting hung up on the item kiosks in Star Citizen, and for good reason. I think that the UI design is in a really rough spot at the moment. I do think it can be pretty easily fixed. Um, Salty Mike, Space Tomato, and many others have talked about solutions, so I don't think that it's a big mystery as to how we could fix it. Just add a paper doll. It's just that simple. But uh, I want to talk about some of the bad UI that shows up in other parts of Star Citizen because there's quite a few. So we're going to take a tour of the game as it stands now in 3.23 because you can see these today and we're going to explore some of the UI problems that Star Citizen has in general and talk about how hopefully they can fix them and bring attention to these because it's <laughs> it's not just item kiosks there's so much more than just that unfortunately and then we're going to take a look at a game that uh, potentially does it a little better and i think it might surprise you what that game is one of them is while the contextual f prompts are better than what we had before I still think that they require a bit more effort than is really necessary. I mean, this is a sliding door. If I approach it, I think it should probably just open on its own most of the time, unless it's a door that was specifically locked. I'm not exactly sure what I would do different with this. Um, I guess F is fine, but with this panel, if you notice, Oh, it's not doing it right now. Usually when you're looking at these panels, you'll see your, uh, ah, there, there we go. So we know what button I'm looking at. I'm close enough that I'm activating the menu. It'd be cool if I could just click ground floor. And as long as I'm close enough, it just takes a single click. Instead, you have to hold F, then you click ground floor, and now you've activated the elevator. I think if we make these a little more contextual, it will make it so that there are fewer button presses required. For other stuff like this, and it's a terminal, you walk up, you hit F, I think that's fine. Log in as user, probably not necessary. It could skip that screen, because you can't do anything without this. So you may as well just skip that screen and just have it do the accessing system part. I mean, it's not like, okay, I guess there is a fact. I've never actually looked for this. Basically, right now, the only functionality that actually exists is to log in as user. If they add something to log in as admin in the future, then fine, you can have this screen. But I don't like it as it is because this is the only thing I ever do with it. Okay, we're off to find more UI things that bug me in this game. Gotta go to the Metro Center. Oh, actually, it connects here. That's This is perfect. So you go to the hospital, right? Go to the hospital, you're saying, Morty, he bait me, Morty. You check in. This part's fine. You use the screen, four, five, room four. Uh, it'd be cool if it gave you a marker. Now that we have this mini map, like, it'd be cool if they uh, integrated that somehow so that it tells you where you're supposed to go. Here we've got another elevator. Would be nice to just be able to contextually click. Okay, floor five, room four, right? Five, room four, zero, wait, zero one, zero three, Two evens are on the left. That's how it works. Another door. I have to press the button. Okay, this is the part that really bugs me. You lie down. What possible options do I have here besides medical care and regeneration? So why can't I just... I've got medical care highlighted. Why can't I just click it? Instead, you have to do this whole song and dance to hold F and then click through all these options. If I'm in the treatment bed... Why can't I just contextually click without having to hold F? You get what I'm saying? Because if you are, if you're operating as the medical assistant, you get an easier option. You can just uh, click this while you got your patient on the bed here. So why can't it be the same when you're the one in the bed? Okay, so that one bugs me. For the next one, we gotta go to the spaceport. I'm getting some really rough frames right now. And trains, cool concept, but Waiting for a train in a video game is dumb. You get the same effect by just having a five second wait.
Okay, spaceport this way. Eyes are hurting because of all this frame lag. Okay, so you come to the ASOP terminal. And you have one singular list of all of your ships. This thing is due for major overhaul. Because we have so many ships in game. And because we have so many ships in game. And you have players like myself who... We have more ships than we actually want to scroll through. And so why not have a toolbar across the top. Little icons. Like a little jet fighter. Um... You could have a little mining laser, a box for a cargo ship, and you can just have like categories of ships to narrow down your search. That would be pretty nice. But let's pull out the Gladius. We'll go to hangar nine and see here we get a marker. And that's really nice. Why don't we get a marker in the clinic? Because that would also be nice. Server meshing can't come soon enough. And then in the future, you know, I'm not playing on 3.24 obviously, but uh, You'd be going to your personal hangar, right? And so the process is a little different. It's basically reversed. You can go to your personal hangar and then use your ASOP terminal in here. But the fact about the toolbars still applies. So you walk up to your ship 99% of the time. What is the exact same sequence that you do every time? You can hold F and you can access the other options here. Just fine. Just do the enter pilot seat because we knew that that's what we were going to do, right? And then this is a single seat fighter. There's no area to go behind me. And this is the only occupiable space. So the only thing that I can really do at this point is turn the ship on. So what I would like to see is in addition to simplifying the process of getting into the ship like they've done, I want to be able to just set everything as a macro of sequences because 99% of the time if it's a single seat ship I'm going to get in the pilot seat hit flight ready without variation and so for the 90 or for the 0.01% of the time that I don't want to do that let me hold F to cancel that sequence and then instead of clicking the default action I can then tell it to just enter the pilot seat, for instance. Okay, let's get away from this stutter fest. I do like the new sounds. New sounds are very nice. Whenever you're flying in quantum travel, it's a good opportunity to try to catch these uh, effects. Get some nice rotation shots. Now that we're away from Lorville, my frames look like they're picking up too, so that's nice. Get a similar shot at the bottom. Try and slow down the rotation a little bit. Takes a lot of concentration for me on the muscle memory side. I'm pinching the mini joystick between my thumb and forefinger to get it at just the right angle so it does a slow rotation. I don't have the thumb to basically pinch against. It's way too easy to just get this spinning too fast and then you don't get a good looking shot. Now let's try a little fancy one. Let's do, ooh, see that? That's a cool shot. Put the three dimensional rotation in. That was a pretty good let off too. That was one of my better Better stops. Cool. That's how I keep myself occupied when I'm doing quantum travel because there's nothing else to really do yet. Here's another UI thing that bugs me. We are using capital letters for all of our distance measurements, which means that you have megameters, which is capital M, capital M. But then when you're standing less than a meter away from a party member, it will show their distance in millimeters which is still capital M, capital M. So that part get, gets confusing. I'm all for using the metric system, but I think we should use the correct capitalization, at least for those units. And I can't remember if it's screwed up the same way in FPS mode or not, because you have HPA for hectopascals, but uh, those should be properly, properly capitalized as well. Otherwise you just run into confusion. So it's cool that we've got correct units now, but let's just full send it and, you know, go all the way. I do greatly appreciate that they added the Tower of Lights to help you find the spaceport. That is a very nice added detail. It would be cool if they were more visible in the daytime, so it's not perfect yet. Maybe they can add some ray cast effect into the ship hut to 
help with that. There's a few minor things that bug me with the UI in ships. The Gladius is one of the better set up because it has its nose gun on a separate fire control group than the other energy weapons. But, uh, and they, I know that they're aware of this because they talked about it last year at Citizen Con. I want to have default views saved to my ship. And so, for instance, here I like having this view of the shields, but over here I want to always be target. But the other one that I want is I want access to my power, right? So they're working on adding back the ray cast holographic screens and that'll fix it. But that's one feature that in my mind can't come soon enough. I, I really want it back. Uh, the other one though is if I go and set, let's see, we go to weapons. If I set these up to be the same, oh, come on, there we go. If I set all these up to be the same weapon group, I want to save that for the next time I get into the ship. And that part has not been consistent yet. So I would love to see that change. And then as we're approaching the spaceport, I think that this is another area where contextual commands could be very helpful because there is a lot of keybinds that players need to remember in order to be really successful at this game. And if you don't know the default keybind or you haven't set it to something, you get this please contact ATC to land. And as a new player, you have to look that up. So I think it would be cool if they would make it so that there was a contextual command that you could enable and have it be enabled by default to help out new players, but basically make it so that when you're in range of an ATC, you can hit one of the more primary buttons to automatically do that command for you. So maybe it is tab on mouse and keyboard. So you get in range of ATC and then you just hit tab and now you are pulling the ATC and you can still give players the flexibility to change that keybind to whatever they want. I have a button bound to it on my joysticks here, so I don't really struggle with that. But that's one thing that new players are really going to find as a pain point, is trying to remember all of these keybinds that Star Citizen has. And then, if you're landed, I think they could make stand to make it a little easier to power the ship off. Um, I know that there is a keybind to do that specifically, but I think consolidating some of these keybinds needs to happen in order to, again, make it easier for newer players. Me, personally, I just never bother with it. As long as you have your engines off, it doesn't really seem to matter. But at some future point, I guess it should, right? Now we're landed at a new city, we've plopped our ship down, and in the new hangar experience, some of the stuff you can do straight from the hangar. I would argue that there's still a lot more that you should be able to do from the hangar. Because if we think about it, let's say that I did come over in my big cargo ship, right? I now have to go from the outskirts of the town to the city center to place an order for cargo, and then I go back to the outskirts of town to then pick up that cargo and put it into my ship. It, If you think about it, it makes a lot more sense from the realism perspective that you'd probably just be ordering that through your Moby Glass, setting up an order ahead of time. So they could put the trade terminal into an app on the Moby Glass, and that would be pretty nice. The other thing they could do is they could just put th that trade terminal functionality into the hangar terminals. And I think doing both is actually the key there. Because if I'm already at the hangar, I forgot to make my order, then doing it from a hangar terminal is just an added convenience. Where doing it from the Moby Glass is it, the convenient part about that is like you can set up an order from anywhere. And then it's like, okay, well, I'm on my way to X location. Let's have them reserve so much of this type of cargo for me, and I'll pick it up when I get there and pay for it when I arrive. You pick it up, load it onto your ship, and then you take off to the next 
place and you say, hey, I'm bringing such and such cargo, I'd like to sell it, let's get a sell order, and then uh, we can finalize the transaction once I get to the new location. You know, simple things like that. It's not breaking the lore. You're still negotiating these things yourself. You're still having that experience, but it's removing some of those pain points that realistically wouldn't exist 900 years in the future, right? Like, um, tonight I just ordered $200 worth of equipment for myself to work on some of the videos that I've got coming in the pipeline. And I did it from my phone. It used to be sure that you had to do it from a desktop because we didn't have smartphones, but surely 900 years in the future, you can just order things when you're just out and about with your little, uh, super watch, right? Oh, look, they do have the unit screwed up. That should be a lowercase a because it's hectopascals. And I can't remember exactly, but I think there's a, I think there's two H units because it, it follows the standard metric scale. And so, you know, you have like decas, decameters and decimeters, and you just denote one by changing the capitalization again. So I'm all for having the metric units, but we got to make sure that we're honoring that capitalization. Otherwise you get into issues. And then what is that? You have lowercase letters in this one. So you can't even argue that it's a consistency thing. I just noticed that. That is, that is so frustrating. <laughs> that is so dumb. Okay, so now we're at the city center, right? So now I'd be placing my cargo order. Again, that part does not make sense. And it's just a major pain point. I think what they really need to do is they need to consolidate the industry functions of the city so that players can do that straight from the hangar. And then you need to pull your mission providers, your NPCs, and all the other cool stuff, yeah, you can consolidate that here in the city. And that will still encourage people to explore because if you put exclusive items in our Corp Plaza that you can't get anywhere else, then they have a reason to come check out the sites. But if they're just trying to chain cargo missions together, there's no reason to make them come all the way over here to make that happen. See, that door opens automatically. Didn't have to hold up on that one which I think is how most doors should function unless they are a locked door. Like now I would do, be doing my commodity order, right? Let's go to somewhere they sell food. That's another one. That's another pain point for me. I think, I think it's this one. I think I'm wrong. Yep, definitely wrong. I think that's where you go to meet Twitch. So I don't think it's there. I think I was meaning to go to this side. Okay, so we got this new contextual shopping menus that pop up, right? But if you if you buy this, you can only do one. So you have the quick buy option. You buy one. Oh, and now I'm stuck. Sweet. Got to break free. So you can only buy one at a time. Um and I think it's cool the way that they have it auto align to the plane of the objects so that you know, these things look parallel. But uh you know, like here, you can barely read that. So I feel like the better option is just just make it orient itself to me, you know? Because you get these weird 90 degree angles and then it's hard to read. So just, just make it orient itself to the player. Kind of like what you would see in a VR headset. But not being able to buy multiple of these from the rack is obnoxious. Same thing happens with any other items you want to buy. I don't think you can buy these from out here. You have to go inside. See, that door opens on its own. So you're looking around. It's, ooh, I like the custodian. I would like to buy 20 of these, but you can only buy one at a time. So why not just bring up that little menu, uh, the sub menu that comes up in the terminals, just bring up a holographic version of that. You know, so like you click buy, right? And then you can just in increment how many you're buying. I want this functionality in the shopping menus, the in-world shopping menus. I can't, they had a word for this. I can't remember what it is. I want to be able to buy 10 at a time. Same thing obviously applies to all these other things mounted on mannequins too. Oh boy. Hopefully uh, Attack of the Clones is going to let me through here. 
Server meshing, server meshing. Okay, so Astro Armada does not have a ton of ships on display. I think they only have the one, right? So you pull up your little kiosk, click one of these ships. There's not a whole lot of information in these ship purchasing terminals. It would be really cool if they incorporated more information here because, you know, how much uh, SCU does the Origin 300i take? Uh, is the 315 any better in that respect? You know, and I'm just throwing these out as hypotheticals. I know the answer myself, but as a new player, you have no idea. You just see this ship, and I mean, if you're at a auto dealer, they would be telling you all the specs about the ship. They might exaggerate a little bit, and don't really want our video game to do that, but uh, I mean, you'd get a little brochure. So why can't I scroll down here? Scrolling down, the only thing that it does is zoom in and out on the ship. But why can't I scroll down here to find out more about it? And I think the same thing should apply when you're purchasing larger items like ships, you know, straight off the rack, like this Hawk here. I don't know if there's actually an angle where I can get it to do the thing, but when you walk up to a ship in other locations that do have more ships on display, you can walk up to them and hit the buy button. But again, it doesn't bring up any information. So before you hand over millions of credits, it'd be nice if on that same page, you could read a little bit about the ship that you're about to buy. And what does the reclaimer do? What does the redeemer do? Why are they named similarly? Are they made by the same manufacturer? So that's another UI pain point for me. And this is not a UI complaint for me. It's uh, more just a uh, puzzling detail. In the US, you always go through on the right. So if you're supposed to be following arrows, those arrows would keep you on the right. I know in the UK, they drive on the wrong side of the road. So is it the same thing with walkways? Is that why these arrows point? What to me seems like a strange direction? Because you have these arrows pointing that, that way, and then these arrows on the left again are pointing the other way. And then just when you think you've got it figured out, you have this arrow pointing this way, and then this arrow pointing this way. But this is the this way route. So if this is the this way route, why do we have a that way route? Waiting a solid minute for a train in a game. I guess I should be glad it got here early. Sir, that is, uh, that is not a safe way to carry your rifle around civilians. Now we know why everyone's scared, because that guy's trying to hip fire everybody. Okay, here's another pain point for me. The new, a lot of the new UI elements are nice, but these teardrop things infuriate me so much. Um, we used to have just kind of like a little thin circle icon, and I think that that one was better because it was less obstructive. The teardrop accomplishes the same task overall, but takes more pixels to get it done, and so I just find them more distracting. Again, interpilot seat and then flight ready macro. Please, please make it happen. All right, for my next trick, I need to start at the sun. They've gotten a little better, okay? I'll give them that, but I think you know what I'm gonna say. It's still hard to read this stuff. I would much prefer the UI to be always readable than to have it look cool uh, because this isn't really usable at this point. They could do things, I guess, like do transition lenses with the cockpit so that, uh, you know, the cockpit darkens when you're staring into a bright light source. I mean, that could help. And they could also have the font color change when you're staring into a bright light source. Maybe they pick just a flat 2D graphic that is always going to stick out. I mean, even, even this, uh, brighter blue in the bottom left, that sticks out better than this paler cyan that they have for the ship UI. So it's not like this is impossible to work out, but I don't think that this is really usable in 
bright settings. And it's even worse when you're trying to do mining because you have that super bright mining laser in front of your eyes. Good luck. No, you're not crazy. Item banks in Star Citizen are pretty terrible at the moment. So I set up a little simulation in a different game of how this handles item banks. Here we've got an ender chest. We'll put this particular netherite sword in here with sharpness three and parry. Shift click that in and we take the train. We come to another item bank. Oh, look, there it is. And we have it instantly equipped. Um, okay. What about uh, armor? Oh, shoot. Gotta not be in, <laughs> gotta not be in creative. I'll kit it up. So it doesn't need to be super complicated. We are, we're, we're allowed to have nice things be quick. So you could do your little animation. Um, this is supposed to work with shift click, which I can't get to do that right now. But, uh, I mean, if you just walk up to your armory or armor stand in Star Citizen, you know, just, just let us hit the use button once. You can play a short little animation, but just let it equip everything all at once. And uh, in our inventory screen, give us something like this where we can just throw stuff on super quick. It doesn't need to be a two-step process. I wanted to keep the analogy going just a little further. Our ender chest here is akin to our station inventory and when you arrive at your home base it's going to have all of your stuff in there right so you would wake up you'd go to an item bank and you have access to all your stuff and then a normal chest is basically analogous to station inventory anywhere else it's not your home you don't have stuff store stored there already so it's just whatever you put there on your own right so we've got that doesn't pop up in the inner chest. So I think we can draw some pretty, pretty direct comparisons to how these two systems compare. Uh, one is super easy to understand. The other is very complicated and unnecessarily so.